programming made possible by Team Kentucky, Cabinet for Economic Development, Mercer County Tourism, Kentucky Lake Tourism, Shepherdsville Bullet County Tourist and Convention Commission, Danville Tourism, Historically Bold. This production was proudly produced in the Commonwealth of Kentucky. Thank you for your support. Did you know Kentucky has more navigable miles of water than any other state in the U.S. except Alaska? Is Alaska still a state? It includes 90,000 miles of streams and dozens of rivers. It's also quite famous for some other liquids, those which flow from a barrel, that being beers, bourbons, and wine. Many of the world's best known distilleries can be found right here in the Bluegrass State. And interestingly enough, pretty darn close to many of our lakes, rivers, and streams. We're here to take you on an expedition of the secrets and histories of our intricate waterways while visiting Kentucky's distilleries, breweries, and wineries. I'm Carrie. And I'm Kyle. And we're two Kentuckians who are pretty proud of our state and want to share a sip of what the Commonwealth has to offer. Excuse me. Oh, Kyle! <laughs> what are you doing here? I don't know what happened, if it was a hot tub time machine or DeLorean, but all of a sudden, we're in the middle of a Civil War battle. Doc! Oh. Wait, Kyle! There's no lead in those rifles. Says you. Did you know, Kyle, that the Chaplin River was the cause for the Perryville Civil War battle? They were fighting over access to fresh water. Are you going to paddle around on the uh, Chaplin River today? I actually have got my sights set on a larger body of water. And then later tonight, I'm going to head into Danville to go to the Big Brass Band Festival. Doesn't that sound like fun? Sounds like a lot of really good history. Speaking of history, Kyle, why are we dressed like General George Washington today? Well, as you know, Kentucky was a neutral state during the Civil War. In fact, Old Honest Abe was born just down the road, and Jeff Davis a little further down the road. So I figured, can't pick a side. <laughs> Gotta go with George, because George was president in 1792 when Kentucky became a state. Well, I think we might learn a little bit more about that history today in Danville. Well, you know, I'm a little bit of a history geek, uh, but I'm also a fan of sipping adult beverages on occasion. So while you're out paddling around, I am going to go visit Blue Rook Distillery and check out some Brazilian spirits. And then I'm heading to Copper and Oak, trying some food and some signature mixology cocktails. Ooh. This happens, I'll be downtown as well. Perhaps we could uh, meet up and buy me a drink, Kyle. How does that sound? That's fancy. General stuff. Washington, correspondence. Thank you, son. And it's president. What you got there? Oh, great. It's a riddle. Ooh. That's when I thought we were going to get away with that one. OK, it says something like this. In the first seat, two friends meet in Kentucky's first. Said this? Hmm. That's a tough one. But I bet, oh. See, I told you about the lead. Well, you want to go try to solve it? I bet it has something to do with the time you were president, Georgie. Yeah, perhaps. You want to go find out? Yeah. All right. I'll catch up with you downtown. Sounds good. Bye. Zach, this is quite the place you have here at Blue Rook in Danville, yeah, Kentucky. You. I mean, wow. Yeah, it's you wouldn't expect to find an oasis of Brazilian spirits and culture in central Kentucky, uh, especially given that we're in the heart of bourbon country. Um, but I was fortunate enough to uh, travel to and from Brazil, fell in love with Brazil's native spirit, cachaça, which is a Brazilian rum, 
found that it's really difficult, if not impossible, to find, uh, certainly in Kentucky, but throughout much of, of the U.S. Life's about taking risks, and here we are. So why Danville? Are you all from Danville originally? How, how do we I end up here? I consider myself a Danvillian. Okay. Uh, my family, Danvillian or Danvillian? A, a little bit of both. A little bit of both. <laughs> Uh, my family moved in 96, so it made sense to bring this home because it's a community that we love, that we know, and that we wanted to contribute to. When we started, we were really just focusing on the cachaça. Well, let's bring this cachaça because we're going to talk a little bit. And cachaça is in the rum family, although it's unique to Brazil. So most rums are produced from molasses, and molasses is the byproduct of granulated sugar production. Well north of 90% of all of the rums that you might see on a store shelf are going to be derived from molasses. And what really makes cachaça distinct is not only its Brazilian origin, but the fact that it is distilled from freshly pressed cane juice. Now let's talk about that because as we were coming up here, I didn't, I may have missed them, but I didn't see the sweeping fields of sugar cane out there. Where right. do you get the materials to make this right. freshly it's pressed? <laughs> So all of the cane that we use is, is grown and harvested in Brazil. Um, the cachaça has to be. It's a product of Brazil right? just as much as bourbon. As we bourbon think of rule as yeah. Right, yeah, exactly. Yeah. In fact, we exchanged a distinction with Brazil. Bourbon in, sold in Brazil has to be a product of the U.S. In exchange for cachaça sold in the U.S. has to be a product of Brazil. Brazil. Product of Brazil. All right. We have uh, partners, distillery partners um, in Brazil. Um, that helped source and kind of take that first step of transforming the cane into ethanol. We import that and we either import it as a, a semi-finished product vis-a-vis -vis the cachaça um, or we take that sort of raw um, ingredient and transform it ourselves into our gin and our vodka. So well, let's see, fun. Let's we gotta try this stuff and see yeah. what Oh, very smooth. Yeah, and I think you'll, you know, it has a smokier nose than you would expect for a, a lot smoky, of rooms. A little bit of pepper. Maybe even reminiscent of tequila, but then the flavor profile. I was going to say, it really almost did have a super sure. smooth tequila. And I think that that's... Tequila in there. I, I think that, and correct me if I'm wrong, but as soon as you take a sip, you understand that, like, there are ties to rum as we tend to think of it. Sure. But that it's distinct from that. This is really nice. Awesome. In 2018, we broke ground on our distillery here. As you can see, uh, it's not only a, a distillation and production facility, but also a place that um, people can come and enjoy the spirits in cocktails right. um, with a meal uh, and really have a, a comprehensive experience that extends beyond just seeing a bottle on a shelf and uh, hoping for the best. That's definitely true. And the Blue Rook name. Sure. So we got claws on this gin. You can see here the detail and the labeling, beautiful labeling too. Uh, where did the Blue Rook come from? So the Blue Rook is a real bird. It holds a special place in Brazilian folklore because it's remarkably good at hiding, not only hiding, but then remembering where it is placed thousands of seeds of a Brazil of a very unique Brazilian pine tree. Zach, before I leave, you know, we have these riddles to figure out on these shows okay. and we explore all these wonderful communities in Kentucky. And they're honestly frustrating and a pain in my rump, but <laughs> I'm trying to figure them out anyway, so I got this. In the first seat, two friends meet, and Kentucky's first said this. I like the friends element. Friends, yeah. Um, I'm stumped though. Friends meet in, in downtown Danville. Go downtown? I would say go downtown. Maybe maybe that's where the answer is. Eh, it's probably at the bottom of this glass. <laughs> we'll hit that first and then go downtown. Cheers. Cheers. Saúde. 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 Lake. 
tell me about where we are. So this is Harrington Lake. It's 2,335 acres of water. KU owns the land under the water and everybody loves to come to swim and fish and it's a recreational lake and we enjoy having visitors. Gwyn Island has a wonderful uh, fish camp. So it's a highly utilized uh, recreational lake. In the summertime, there's boaters, and you can probably hear those and see those around <laughs> us. There we had a couple of jet skis go by. Sea dews, yes. Uh, so um, I've spent a lot of time on this lake, not only paddling, but fishing and skiing and raised my boys here. So it's just a wonderful place to come visit and live. We have people from all over Kentucky that actually have um, houses on the lake. I've met people through uh, my, my career that who told me that they, oh, well, I have a, a place to live right on that lake. One of Kentucky's oldest reservoirs, it was built with private money to generate electricity for Kentucky utilities. When the Dix Dam was created, it was a marvel of modern engineering. Upon completion, it was the largest rock-filled dam in the world. From the riverbed to the top of the dam, it measures 287 feet high. That's 150 feet higher than Niagara Falls. And while the majority of fishermen who visit the lake intend to catch an abundance of bass, crappie, catfish, and bluegill, others come looking for a one-of-a-kind creature fabled to have called the lake home for the last century although it's never been caught or photographed. I'm talking about the elusive eel pig. The eel pig is a 15 foot long creature with a body like an eel, skin like that of a speckled fish, and a short stubby snout like a pig. It's said to be able to swim as fast as a boat. First sighted in the 1920s by locals, sightings have continued, but whether it's a prehistoric monster or just a misidentified alligator or another type of fish, the existence of Harrington Lake's eel pig remains one of the region's most fascinating mysteries. Mary, tell me a little bit about this island. This is Gun Island, I understand? This is in an interesting island. So this is Dunn Island, and it's been um, recently purchased by an individual, privately owned now, probably for the last month. And so we're kind of excited to see what kind of uh, facility they're planning on putting on this island. Obviously, the only way you can get to it is by boat. And we also have, again, islands in a community where there are typical a state where there typically are no islands. You know, Mary, I have a riddle that I need to solve and I was wondering if you might be able to help me with it. A riddle? I will try. All right. In the first seat, two friends meet and the first said this. Maybe you should go downtown Danville. A lot of friends gather in downtown Danville, especially during the Parasol Parade. Ooh, I do like a good parade. Now, is that part of your brass band festival tonight? It is, and uh, usually the parade is midday, and they march Main Street with their parasols down to Center College, where they sit and watch the bands on the big stage. That sounds like a lot of fun. Well, did you know that the first Constitution was written and signed in Danville, Kentucky? I did not! Yes, it's the city of firsts, and that was one of our firsts. Oh. You know, I bet I could solve my riddle there. I bet you could too, because there's governor's circle, and there's two gentlemen standing atop that governor's circle, and they're shaking hands. So there may be some clues there for you. Ooh, I'm definitely gonna solve this riddle before Kyle. This is a nice place downtown Danville. Copper and oak, where'd that name come from? Well, anyone who knows anything about distillation, 
You have your copper columns, and then it goes into oak barrels, and, and it just kind of works, copper and oak. Would you recommend trying food first, or would you recommend trying a signature cocktail first? Do you want Lahanna's opinion or the professional opinion? Let's go with yours. Oh, the I'm going to consider you a professional. Oh, I'm a cocktail? professional bourbon drinker, so the cocktail. <laughs> well, let's let's try the cocktail. It looks like you got something in front of you there that could be a science experiment or a delicious drink or both. Both, Fantastic. for sure. So, this here is our smoked old fashioned. It is a whiskey of your choice. Couple other ingredients. I'll tell you all about it here in a second. And the cool thing about Copper Notes is that we make this right at your table. So it's like a drink and a show. It's Pretty like cool. one of those hibachi places. Yeah. Our smoked old fashioned, we have four wood chip choices. This one here is the hickory. And we start, bring this to your table, get a heavy char on every side of these chips. I promise I will not burn you. I do this about 20 times a day. You can burn me, it's totally fine. <laughs> So we just like to get a good little flame rolling and then... Bring some marshmallows. <laughs> right, campfire. Try to capture all the smoke, make Ooh, sure yeah. that's flush with the plank board. All right, in here, the deliciousness. This is two ounces of bourbon or whiskey of your choice. Our choice for today, because we're partial, is Wilderness Trail. Wilderness Trail, This all is right. their high rye bourbon. It's the black label, it's amazing. There's some agave syrup. It's a little bit sweeter than a regular simple syrup. And then there's about three shakes of orange bitters. We put just a little bit of ice in there so that we don't dilute the bourbon. Give it a quick little stir, and here we are. Look at that ice ball. All right, this is a whole ice ball. Oh, so this, let's hope that I don't drop it here on the table, is like the most important part of this process. We Got get the ice sand. ball in there. You ready? Look at this. There and we, go. we transfer this into here and try to capture as much smoke as possible. If you look really close, you'll still see smoke going on top when I do this. Ooh, it's pretty slow on my delivery there, but I think we still got some. That was like... See? All right. Look at We're that. almost there. Just a couple of more steps to this drink. We take a citrus peel. Give it a little spritz right there. And we like to put a little char on this as well. If you're like super close, you can actually see some of the citrus oils that oh, extract yeah. into the drink, giving it a little more flavor. Go right around the edge here with it. Drop that and then we top it with a Bordeaux cherry, which is amazing. It's a little snack for later. Oh, look at that. That is entertainment and a beverage at the same time. It's pretty cool. And like, do you like regular old fashions? Yes. Okay, so you'll see the difference here. The smoke in it changes the flavor profile completely. And like, depending on your wood chip, sometimes it's sweeter, sometimes it, it is more like campfire. So different chips do make a difference between the hickory they do. or what other types do you use? Like, So we have hickory, apple, mesquite, and cherry. Yeah. Your own wood chips, your own bourbon. This is so It's pretty cool. cool. You can still smell the smoke, like it just, oh. That is quite the cocktail. You like it? I see why this is popular here, what? And it's so, oh. it's crazy how different it is from a regular old fashioned. It really is, I mean, I, you know, and I was like, when I watched you make it, I thought, how's that smoke flavor gonna stay in there? But it's there. It's like, there. It's there in the drink. And then, yeah. And that, yes, that uh, rye is excellent. Yeah, I'm a huge fan of it. And, and then what's kind of neat about this is you can order this, apparently. You come here each time and you can mix it up where you do a different wood chip, different type of bourbon. Absolutely. Like, and you got a different drink almost. I can't do the math on that, but that's a lot of different that's a lot of combos. varieties. Pretty cool. And we should, this is making me hungry. Yeah? Yes. Well. Now we need to talk about food. <laughs> Ask and you shall receive. Talk about food. This looks fantastic. What do we have in front of us? We have some staples on our menu, and then also we do a weekly feature here, and we switch it up all the time, and that's one of the entrees that I'll show you. So over here, you have our New York strip. This is USDA Prime. And this New is York coming strip. from here, you mentioned it the beef? It comes from Heritage Farm, yeah. So everything's as local as possible here. Then you have our rosemary garlic mashed potatoes and asparagus, which is my personal favorite. 
we get seafood shipped here fresh every week from New York. And so that's why sometimes our features change. It's whatever they catch, they get us. Like I have a picture of this big swordfish that they sent us recently and things like that. So we are very big on fresh seafood around here. That would be this here. It's our catch of the day on the menu. That's what it states because we do change it. This week it happens to be a blackened mahi-mahi mm. topped with a mango jalapeno salsa. Mm. That's my personal favorite. That, I thought the asparagus was. I like food How many and favorites whiskey. can you have? Oh my goodness. I have lots of favorites and All best right. friends. It's I don't blame you, I don't blame you. <laughs> I'm not judging, honestly. Don't judge me. I'm not well, judging. You can, it's I'm okay. Not this here is always on our menu. This is the shrimp and grits little Creole sauce in there. It is made with a lager beer, which we took all the alcohol out, of course. Why? But packed full <laughs> of flavor there. And over here is our weekly feature, which is lamb chops. Ooh, they have a rosemary garlic chops. butter on them. And what you see here is like the talk of copper and oak, which is funny. It's a Brussels sprout. Brussels sprouts? It's a Brussels sprout, but people come up to us all the time and they're like, they I've never liked really Brussels good. sprouts, but I eat your Brussels sprouts. So there's a little secret they there to them. They look delicious. Yeah, so we deep fry them. So if you deep fry anything, it automatically right, goes right, right I mean, up. Oreos, Brussels sprouts, whatever. All of it, just yeah, deep fry, yeah. we're in Kentucky. And then we toss them in this house made hot honey glaze. And so they have like just a little bit of sweetness and a little bit of a bite to them. But those Brussels sprouts, we sell more of those than They look anything. really good. Yeah. They look great. And we got some potatoes with it, it Yeah, looks like. we have the oh. crispy red skin potatoes. We smash oh them down, gosh. toss them in a garlic thyme butter. This looks amazing. We like our food around here. Oh, <laughs> and there's more. This is just a few of the features, but it's a full yeah. menu, burgers, everything. I mean, a little, a little bit, bit of everything, everything. yeah. Oh, and it is all Kentucky, and I love that. I hear there's going to be some sort of festival and with music happening uh, later on yes. today. So I mean, good gosh, right here in Danville. Yes, it is actually my favorite weekend in Danville. I love Brass Band Festival, just watching everybody come together and have fun. Mm, it's going to be blast. a blast. Oh, before I leave and eat food, you know, I've got to figure out this riddle show because that's what we do on these shows is figure out riddles all right and it goes something like this in the first seat two friends meet and kentucky's first said this Bamble being a city of first two people mm -hmm. meet city of first Yes, there's a lot of firsts in Danville. It was the first seat in the state of Kentucky. Really? So. People went around without chairs for that long? They did. Their backs must have hurt from standing all day. Amazing. <laughs> um, I bet you'll find the answer probably down that way, because I'm thinking that of way. two people. That, that way. way, that way. Down Main Street. Down Main Street, there's Constitution Square down there. I heard something about Constitution Square. Yeah, that's where our local farmer's market is. Pretty cool. Constitution Square. Well, after we eat all of this, drink six or seven more of these, we'll head to Constitution Square and solve this riddle. Take that, Carrie. <laughs> at Blue Rook Distillery taught me all about Brazilian cachaça. Cachaça. So they taught me about cachaça. We may have sampled a little bit. But they also, I asked them about that riddle thing. And I found out that this was the place that people used to meet up. In fact, those two people met up here. How did you figure out to get that? Well, Mary told me on our paddle today on the beautiful Dix River that there was going to be a parade start here. As there was. There yes. was. I also learned at my friends at Copper and Oak that Danville is the town of first. It is. When I came through the park, I stopped to see these beautiful log cabins, and I noticed that the first day constitution was written here. So, riddle 
first seat, two friends meet, Kentucky's first said this, then what do they say? Well, our first governor was in the Constitutional Assembly. Okay. And I bet you've seen that statue somewhere else before. I've never seen that statue anywhere else before. Mm. That statue. Have you seen those two friends somewhere else before? Well, I was out late one night in one of the shows, and we were at the bar. And I, they could have been there. What about but... uh, on one of those flags over there, Kyle? The blue flag? Yeah. You know which flag that is? That's the Kentucky flag. It is. And you know what? Do you know what that flag says? Live for your die hard. No, no, no. It says, united we stand. Divided we fall. I think we got it. That's it. It is. Yes. We got a riddle yes. together. Teamwork. Yes. First time. Can we go drink down celebrate? I think we should. Let's go. All right. So Carrie, you know, this is quite the moment now. Our very first downstream episode, 2016, we were at Wilderness Trail with Jared. We tried sorghum molasses rum, blue hair and vodka, but you know what wasn't ready? This, the bourbon. This is the rye, rye whiskey right here. Rye whiskey, bourbon whiskey, we got it all now. It's ready to taste. And to close out, Danville, Boyle County, we'll see you. Hey, Anna, uh, wait, 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 I got a question first. Yeah? Are you gonna explain the uh, Dada on your shirt? You know, it's funny you should ask that. What have you done, Kyle? It just so happens I've made a miniature me. Oh, Lord help us. This is Xander. Hi. And he is going to be so excited <laughs> here in a few years to try Wilderness Trail himself. I mean, I think it will be great. What do you think, bud? It looks good, doesn't it? Oh, mom's here. Uh... Oh, yeah, yeah. Here you go. <laughs> Don't drink and drive, people. You wanna go listen to some brass band music? Let's do it. Let's go. I think we can drink a toast to that. Let's do it. We'll see you downstream. Downstream.